Hi guys, welcome to our daily encounter. Today we read uh, about Saul and his army. And this kind of picks up in the story of Saul about 20 years into his reign. Not a lot of information going from uh, that early part of his reign, that first year or so of his reign, up to uh, what where it picks up in chapter 13. Uh, but by this point, um, Saul has a son by the name of Jonathan, who's a part of the army. And Jonathan rises up against a garrison of the uh, Philistines in Geba. And this stirs up the Philistines. And the Philistines amass this great army. Uh, and they, they rise up against Israel to attack it. And it's interesting the way the people of Israel respond to this threat. Uh, some of them just hide out where they are. We see this in chapter 13. Starting in verse 6, where it says, When the men of Israel saw that they were in a strait, for the people were hard-pressed, then the people hid themselves in caves and thickets and cliffs and cellars and in pits. And so some of them just hid out where, wherever they could find a place to hide. Others ran away. They booked it and ran. And verse 7 says, Also some of the Hebrews crossed the Jordan into the land of Gad and Gilead. Uh, so Felicia was uh, west of Israel, uh, kind of southwest, uh, there against the Mediterranean Sea on the west coast. And to go east would have been going uh, completely away from Philistia, to get away from the Philistines as far as possible. And so some crossed over the Jordan and went into the eastern part of the land of Israel. Others stuck close to Saul, but eventually began to scatter as well. Uh, that's why Saul kind of forces himself to offer offer the sacrifice. He feels like, Samuel's not coming quick enough. Samuel was supposed to come within seven days to offer uh, up the sacrifice to God on behalf of the people. And because everyone was scattering, Saul gets impatient and he, and he uh, offers up the sacrifice. Um, and so that shows that some of the people were beginning to scatter. So that's another part of the people. And, and then we find those who didn't scatter, but they still are there with Saul, unequipped, trembling and afraid but then we have a man by the name of jonathan as mentioned saul's son who and we'll read more about this tomorrow in chapter 14 where we find that jonathan was an individual who was armored who had a weapon and he was full of faith and he ends up having uh, uh, experiences of victory and so we find that um, there were people who responded to this threat in multiple ways, either by hiding out or by running or by scattering or maybe staying with the king, but trembling and unarmed. And then Jonathan, who's full of faith, he's well armored and he's got his weapon. And when we think about this in our own context, we could say, you know, where do we fit whenever, uh, whenever we are opposed by our society? Whenever the enemy rises up against the church in our society and begins to challenge the church uh, and really the society begins to turn on the church, uh, either because of certain beliefs that the church holds or, or whatever it might be, whenever society begins to turn on the church and the pressure is placed on the church, how do we respond? Uh, which which group of people do we fall under? Are we the type of believers who hide out, who just kind of bury our lamp under the bushel and just kind of try to hang tight and wait the storm out and kind of don't really, we kind of see shining our light and making a bold stance for Christ. And so we kind of just back down and, and try to hide our faith. Uh, that might be one response we might have. The other would be to book it and run. Say, you know what? This Christian faith is too difficult. It makes it too hard in my job to hold fast to these beliefs that I have, or it's too hard to hold on to these particular relationships I have. And so it's better for me to just run and to get out of here and just give up the Christian faith altogether. Or we might be those who try to hang close to Christ, but as, it, as the heat gets turned up, even then we begin to scatter. And then there's those who even stay closer to Christ. They don't scatter. They don't run. They're not necessarily hiding, but they're still trembling and unarmed. 
In other words, they're un incapable of meeting the uh, opposition because they're not full of faith. They're not armored. They, they don't have their weapons ready. Uh, they're just standing there afraid and unarmed. But hopefully, uh, we will be those who are like Jonathan, who stand firm in the Lord and in the strength of his might, as Ephesians chapter 6 talks about, and puts on the full armor of God, who takes up the shield of faith and the sword of the Spirit, who uh, has uh, a heart full of faith and boldness, and is taking a stand for the Lord, who's not afraid of the enemy, who recognizes that if God is for us, who can be against us? Those who will rise up against the opposition that society might throw against them, who might stand up against the opposition that their co-workers or their family members or other people that they are in, they have a relationship with rise up against them. They're willing to stand bold and to hold fast to the faith that they have. Will we follow that example? Uh, hopefully so. And hopefully our story today will encourage us to respond in that way. And as we continue this story tomorrow, uh, we'll be all the more encouraged to respond in that way. So maybe in our reading today, it would be great for us to perhaps pause and just reflect on ourselves and think, you know what, you know, we've encountered some opposition over the past um, few decades. It might could go even further than that. But we've we've experienced some opposition. How did we, how did I respond? We could ask ourselves, you know, how did I respond to that opposition? Did I just hide out? Um, did I completely leave the Christian faith or at least get, try to distance myself from the Christian faith? Um, did I try to hang out with Christ, but at the same time I would scatter when things got when things heated up, was I there with Christ? Did I still remain standing with Christ, but trembling and unarmed? Or was I like Jonathan, fully armored, weapon in hand, and full of faith? Um, however we answer that question for ourselves, it would be a great challenge for us to say, you know what, as perhaps opposition continues to rise, uh, maybe in future um, opposition we might encounter, we want to be prepared to be those who are like Jonathan. Again, fully armored, weapon in hand, and full of faith. If so, I think the church can make a big impact in our society. If nothing else, we can protect what we've gained in this society, in the Christian faith, and uh, we can make a big impact in, uh, for future generations so that uh, the faith of, in Jesus Christ can continue to perpetuate generation after generation. So here's some things we can reflect on and think about as we do our reading today. With that, guys, I do thank you for watching the video today. Hope you guys have a great day. Love you guys. God bless.